Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here aboard good old Athena. If you're new to my channel, this lovely looking boat here behind me is Athena. I'm a couple of years into a somewhat extensive refit that I hope to be able to finish within two years so that my girlfriend Ava and I can move aboard. But as you can see, I've still got plenty of DIY fun ahead of me. Quite a lot has happened here aboard Athena over the last year. Last summer I found some soft spots on the deck and when I investigated further, it turned out the entire sandwich construction was soaking wet. I decided to rebuild the entire deck, which meant tearing up all of the old wet foam and rotten plywood. Finally, after months of removing old core and putting down new core, we were able to start laying up new glass. All that hard work left me with a brand new rock solid deck, which is awesome. What's not so awesome is all the fairing that's required to get the rough fiberglass to hopefully look nice when it's painted with a high gloss paint. And this is where we're at now. I am hopeful that I'll be able to apply primer to at least some parts of the cabin top later in this video and that I'll be able to apply top coat within a week or two because I need to move out of this awesome shed. Here on the forward edge of the cabin top, I think we're about as close to perfect as I'm gonna get. I am not a professional at this. My day job is as a software developer and there is not a whole lot of overlap between those two skill sets. So this has been a lot of trial and error, but yeah, I think it'll turn out okay. My absolute favorite thing about DIY is the fact that you can go back and fix your own mistakes. And I guess the same is true for this. If I mess up the fairing process, I'll have another chance in however many years before we decide to repaint the deck, or perhaps I'll have learned to live with my apprentice marks by then. The tricky thing about fairing a surface like the cabin top here that's going to get painted with a high gloss paint is the fact that you won't really see all of your mistakes until after you've applied top coat and by then it's kind of too late unless you want to go back and repeat the entire process. But there are a few tools that can help out. One of those tools is a guide coat, whether it be in the form of dry guide coat like the stuff I've got here, a bit of spray paint or maybe just a primer, a guide coat will help you reveal any low spots and pinholes. I've already gone ahead and applied guide coat to the forward edge of the cabin top a couple of times and added more fairing compound as needed. The dark areas you can see here is where a bit of that guide coat got mixed with the fairing compound. So that shouldn't really be a low spot, but once I get the primer on here, I can sand the first coat of that and see if we still have any kind of low spots. Like I mentioned earlier, I am not a professional at this, nor am I an expert, so don't just go blindly copying what I'm doing here. With that said, let's go ahead and get some guide coat on the starboard side of the cabin top. As you can hopefully see, both the cockpit combing and the side of the cabin top now looks a lot darker. With the guide coat applied, it is now time for everybody's favorite pastime, glorious, glorious sanding. For this most festive of occasions, I'm gonna be using the largest manual sanding board I've got from FlexiSander, and these things are freaking awesome. Oh, and on here, I've got this sanding net from Mirka. There are some areas where I can't use this big flexible sander from Flexi Sander, for instance, here along this back edge here, because if I use this, I would simply just be rounding over this edge and I don't want that. Out comes Gloria. Gloria is apparently the name of my Durablock and uh, this was given to me by Cliff at the meetup in LA. Thank you so much, Cliff. This thing is freaking awesome. <laughs> As you can hopefully see, the side of the cabin tub is looking pretty good. The side of the cockpit combing here is a different matter. I knew the cockpit combing wasn't really ready for guide code yet, but I went ahead and applied it anyway so that I could show you how easy it is to spot the areas that still need some work once you've got the guide code on there. It simply just sticks to all of the little low spots. On the side of the cabin tub, things are looking a lot brighter. 
literally, there's not a lot of black left here. As you can see, there's a little bit of an issue here, and then I've got a spot here in the middle. I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera, but to me, it looks like there's a big, sort of very shallow low spot in this entire area. But we can go ahead and check that with the fairing board. by just holding up against the side and looking for any light that's coming through. Yeah, it does look like there is a little bit of light shining through down there. Let me go ahead and zoom in the camera so that you guys might be able to see. I don't know how well the camera is going to be able to pick this up, but if you keep your eye on this area, you might be able to see a little bit of light. The same appears to be the case back there. Other than that, I mean, there are some tiny areas down there and there, but other than that, she's starting to look pretty good. It's time to mix up some more fairing compound, and for that I'm going to use West Systems 105, taken with 407, and we've got a little bit of a heat spell going on here in Denmark right now, so I've switched back to 206, the slow hardener, just to give myself a little bit more working time. When it comes to choice of fairing filler, there is another option from West System called 410, but I don't believe that's recommended for areas with foot traffic, at least that was what I was told when I called West System's technical support last summer before fairing the deck. So I'm going to stick with 407. Five pumps of resin and five pumps of hardener is all I'm going to mix up for now. There's no need to get greedy. This may not look like a lot, but for the small areas I'm going to touch up, this should be plenty. Hey guys, it is a few days later, also known as Friday afternoon. The weekend is finally here, and of course that means DIY fun time. Over the last couple of days, I have sanded and applied yet more fairing compound on the side of the cabin top, and especially here on the side of the cockpit combing. And I think she's starting to look pretty decent. Here is a little bit of a closer look on the port side. There's still some work to be done, but as you can hopefully see, progress is being made. Because I am not experienced at fairing, it is very time consuming. Like I mentioned, I am but a mere mortal software developer. I've been putting in four to five hours every day after work for the last week and a half, and I finally feel like I'm starting to get somewhere. In last weekend's video, I asked you guys for suggestions as to how I could deal with the outside and the inside corners here along the cabin top and along the cockpit combing. There were lots of good suggestions and thank you so much for those guys. Here on the inside corner on the forward part of the cabin top between the cabin top and the deck, I decided to use one of them and that was to cut a little custom spatula or shaping tool. I cut a corner off of one of these yellow plastic doohickeys from West System and simply just formed it to a shape I thought would be appealing, applied a bit of fairing compound to the area and used this to form the curve. As you can see here, the finish is not that great. There's a big fat line here running all the way down the middle. And that's because I used my jigsaw to form this with and that's left a little bit of a fussy surface. But uh, let's see if we can't clean that up. That candle certainly cozies up the shed quite a lot. I'm hoping a little bit of heat will melt the fuzz you see here and that should leave a much cleaner surface. In case this goes horribly wrong, I do have some metal ones that I can go ahead and shape as a backup, but I want to see if this works. I don't want to melt the entire thing, I just want to get rid of that little bit of fuzz. To me, this looks a whole lot better. It's certainly not fuzzy anymore, but uh, we'll take this for a spin a little later in the video. Now, like I said, I asked you guys two questions, and the other question was, how do I take care of the outside corners? Enough coziness. Ta-da! A tiltable base for my router. Now, actually, this box is empty because I've already taken the thing for a spin because I wasn't sure it was going to work. I noticed there are some different angles I need to be able to handle, and by that I mean the angle in the outside corner here in the cockpit combing is different from the one on the side of the cabin top, and that, again, is different from the one on the forward part of the cabin top. But within those areas, the angle pretty much stays constant. I knew there was going to be a slight challenge to doing this because roundover bits are typically designed for 90 degree corners and this is not a 90 degree corner and that means the roundover bit would dig into the surface. 
This is where things got a little bit interesting. I donned a full chainmail suit, 17 pairs of safety glasses, and my lucky rabbit's foot and took a file to a spinning router bit. I'm sure the safety brigade are gonna have a field day with this down in the comment section, but uh, yeah, I survived. This is the result of my efforts, a custom shaped roundover bit. As you can see here, this is no longer a 90 degree angle. With the tiltable base on here and my custom roundover bit, I can simply just let this ride along the edge and I will have a perfectly smooth radius. And like I said, I've already taken this thing for a spin and this is the result. That looks absolutely perfect. Before I get to use my little Franken bit here and round over those corners, which I am very excited about, of course I need to make sure that the sides are as close to perfect as I can get them. That was a lot of fun. I mean, four hours spent sanding is four hours spent sanding. I am making decent progress, but I've noticed a tiny little setback. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera already, but uh, I'm gonna tilt the camera from side to side and you guys should be able to see it. If you look at where that first little port light is, there's a ginormous low spot there. If I take my big fairing board here and flip it on its side, hold it up against the cabin top side here, I can see that from around here all the way to over here, that's like one giant low spot. I am sure you guys will be able to see the gap in here. It's not that big, it's a few millimeters, but with the high gloss paint and the sun on there, I am sure that would be very visible. For a comparison over here on the starboard side, that area is nice and flat. I don't know if that is an issue from the mold or from when we rebuilt the deck last summer and laid glass up the side of the cabin top. But either way, it would be nice to get it fixed. Before I can get to fairing, there is still a little bit of sanding to take care of on the forward end of the cabin top. A while back, I asked you guys what you thought would be a good way of sanding the radius in between the hull and the keel. And there were a lot of comments suggesting pool noodles. Now it might be because of the complete lack of pools here in Denmark, but we don't really have pool noodles. What we do have are these little doodads for insulating pipes. And the cool thing is they come in all kinds of sizes. For instance, this one is 15 millimeters and this one is 22. This is 35. So you can find one that kind of matches the radius you're sanding. I've mixed up some fairing compound. Now let's see if burning the edge on my custom fairing tool here has made any kind of a difference. Good morning guys, it is Saturday morning. Last night I continued fairing a few of the areas that need a little bit more work, but it started getting dark really quick. This is what the forward edge looks like fully cured. A little bit of sanding, a smidge more fairing compound, and I would say this is gonna be very close to pretty dang spiffy. I also applied the first layer of fairing compound to the ginormous low spot area here. This will definitely require some more work. I'm just happy I found it now rather than after I've painted. I've made some decent progress on the sides of the cabin top and the cockpit combing. So now I'm gonna turn my attention to the cockpit. As you can see, I do have a little bit of work ahead of me here in the cockpit. Certainly it looks a little bit rough, but remember most of this is gonna get covered in either teak or some kind of synthetic alternative. So there's actually not a lot of fairing to do here, which is awesome news. Now that the cockpit is nice and tidy, let's jump into the deep end of the pool and see if I can remove the steering pedestal. Now that is of course not really needed for painting, but later this winter I'd love to see if I could refurbish this old thing and spiffy it up a bit. The steering pedestal is functional, but it's got a few extra holes in this plate here. There's a crack, the paint job's not looking that great. So yeah, it would just be nice to shine it up a little bit.
It looks like the pedestal itself is secured with four big bolts and then the stainless frame out here is secured with another four teeny tiny bolts. It's been a while since I've seen the inside of the engine compartment and I'm happy to report she still looks good after all the work I put in last winter. The base doesn't actually look in bad shape. A quick bit of sanding and some paint and this will look like a million bucks. There's this little cover for this box here. Now this used to be secured with screws. Those are badly corroded and uh, it was now secured with just some kind of caulking. We'll get back to this at some point in the future. For now, I'm just gonna store it down below. There's good news, there's bad news, and then there's, huh. Now let's start with the good news. The core looks nice and dry. The bad news is that the top skin is not doing that well, and that's because of the voids in here I found this winter, but I can just repair this little area. That should be easy enough. And now for the, huh, if you look over here, there's a spot here that looks a little bit odd, and if you poke it, it turns out it's caulking. So I guess someone drilled a hole here by mistake and then just filled it with caulking rather than doing a proper repair. Huh. I've removed the items that were bolted to the underside of the cockpit sole. I've done that so that I can drill, fill, drill these holes so that we won't ever have any problems with the core in here rotting. Okay, that is fiberglass, so I've made it all the way through the core down to the bottom skin. Look at that core in there, squeaky dry and as good as the day it was put in. That's awesome. I've enlarged all of the holes. A little later today when I mix up thickened epoxy, I'm gonna pour some of it in there, let it cure, come back, redrill the holes, and then, well, water should never be able to get in contact with the core. Hmm. Ah. Well, that's certainly a first. I was using the angle grinder to remove a bolt down here and uh, my shirt caught fire. Hmm, that's a shame. I kind of like this shirt. This is all part of the rudder. This bushing sits inside of this doohickey. Now with this out of the way, it should be easier to paint this and also I needed to re -bed this anyway. It was leaking. I've basically removed everything I can remove here in the cockpit with the exception of this teak trim here around the companionway and I can't really make up my mind as to whether or not I want to remove that because if I remove it, there's a strong chance I'm gonna wreck it. Right now I'm leaning towards leaving it in place and just covering it up with masking tape before painting. But uh, what do you guys think? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Before leaving the boat today, I would like to get some glass laid up on these surfaces here to help stabilize them a little bit. So uh, let's get to some prep work. I've been walking on this surface extensively over the last couple of months. So the first step is gonna be to wipe it down with some isopropyl alcohol to get rid of any contamination. With the surface reasonably clean, let's get to some sanding. Ah, you gotta love a little bit of prep work sanding to break up all of the fairing sanding. Good news is, I am about halfway done with the cockpit. This is the starboard side, I haven't touched that yet. But over here, we've got the port side, which is done. And there's a pretty stark contrast between the two. As you can see, I've gone up the sides of the cockpit combing a little bit in certain areas, and that's just because there was a little bit of delamination when I removed the old teak deck. That's gonna require a little bit of fairing, but that's okay. I've knocked down any high spots in this repair that were higher than the surrounding cockpit combing, and uh, this should now be nice and easy to fare. It is getting pretty late in the day. It's already seven o'clock, so I better engage turbo mode and get the glass laid up here in the cockpit. Fortunately, I've already cut all of the glass I need. 
This is all 300 gram by Actual. I'm gonna put down two layers on each side. We've got some peel ply here, got my foam roller and a tray. Yeah, I think we're ready. Good morning guys. It is Sunday morning and I've got a little bit of bad news. I was really hoping I'd be able to show you guys primer being applied to at least part of the cabin top in this video. Most of all, just to give you guys a sense of achievement because watching me do endless amounts of fairing and prep work, well, I don't think it's that interesting, but sadly I am not gonna be able to apply primer today. I put in a 14 hour day yesterday, but the cabin tub is just not ready yet. So that will have to wait until next week. But uh, let's take a quick look at the cockpit. Beautiful, beautiful new laminate. The cockpit is ready for just a touch of fairing compound. Before ending this video, I would like to get a first pass of fairing compound on this area here. I know it may sound weird, but I'm starting to find it very appealing to smooth out uneven surfaces. That's probably just a side effect of inhaling too much fairing dust. Ta-da! I think this is gonna be one spiffy looking cockpit in a couple of weeks. If you just squint real hard and pretend that the cabin top and the cockpit is a dull green, that is what it would have looked like with primer on there. But like I said, sadly not this weekend. I'm going to spend the rest of today plugging away at that stupid prep work, but uh, I think I'm gonna end this video here. Next weekend is gonna be hopefully finishing up that prep work and applying primer. And then the weekend after that could be applying top coat, which means I should be able to meet my deadline by the end of October to get out of the shed. Fingers crossed. Thank you so much for sticking with me through all of this fairing and sanding. And I hope to see you back next weekend. And uh, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.